For more than 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter in our community. From our studios in St. Clair, you're watching Focus with Paul Dingeman. Well, hello again. I'm Paul Dingeman. Glad to have you along for the uh, Focus program. We are uh, very excited today to have some representatives from the Community Foundation of St. Clair County. Uh, Phil Russell, the principal of uh, Gearing Ele Elementary, will be along to talk about a parade they had here in town recently and uh, some, other, some other good interviews. So let's begin with uh, Dr. Saman. Hello and welcome to the uh, Focus program. Thank you for having me. Uh, you are uh, with a wonderful organization which has been around St. Clair County since like 1941, um, yep. which is the Community Foundation of St. Clair County. And they always jump up and uh, take, take command and, and get things straightened around when we're in trouble, and that's no different today. What, what is the Thumb Coast Regional Response Fund? So, um, yes, the Community Foundation, I'm very honored to be representing them today. Uh, I am the chair of the board, and the Thumb Coast Regional uh, Response Fund, uh, we started that fund as soon as, you know, the whole COVID-19 crisis started in the country. Uh, we know that even though now we are not getting a lot of requests, but we know this is coming. Uh, in our little county, uh, you know, there are a lot of lost jobs and loss of benefits. Uh, people don't have insurance. There's a lot of vulnerable population in this area. So the Community Foundation started that uh, uh, fund to support those in need through the organizations that are supporting those on the front line, uh, those nonprofit organizations that work to support those vulnerables. You had some people right at the beginning, Eastern uh, Michigan Bank uh, came in with $10,000, then Detroit Edison Foundation jumped in with 25,000. You've had some other have, additional for, uh, we, funds, you're up to a couple yes. hundred, 100,000? We have, we have some very generous uh, uh, organizations, corporations, businesses, and individuals actually that stepped up right away. Yes, we had the Eastern Michigan uh, Bank with 10,000, the DTE 25,000, the Cush family uh, gave us 8,000. There are a few anonymous donors and some individual donors. As of today, we have just in that fund uh, a, little, uh, a little less than $60,000. Wow, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. Uh, and now, with the community, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say the Community Foundation uh, itself, we looked into pretty much every penny that is non-restricted to see what we can support that fund. So in total, we have about 200000 to support. Okay, what are you going to do with that 200000 or plus? Well, we are, we are definitely going to 100% spend it back in the community to those needed. Um, none of it is staying. There's no administration fee for the $60,000 that we have in that fund. Uh, we have had very few requests so far, a few thousands uh, here and there, but nothing significant. But we know they're coming because most of those uh, frontline organizations right now are spending their own uh, operation money that they have on hand and soon they're gonna run out and turn to us. So who should apply? Um, any organization that actually works with those frontline uh, populations. So, you know, whether they're schools or even un government units that deal with those or nonprofits like the, you know, soup kitchen and food pantries and you name it. There's a lot of um, hospitals um, can also apply um, if, if they need anything, anything to do with helping those affected by the pandemic. Okay, so all they've got to do is go online to the uh, Community Foundation uh, web, web page. And on Correct. that page, the, down at the bottom, there's, there's an application uh, form for, uh, uh, to donate and an application yeah. form to, uh, to fill out if, you need, if you're in need. Absolutely. So not individuals, but those that need to support those individuals. Yes, they can either apply. They can go to stclairfoundation.org and find either donate, like you said, if they would like to donate. Any 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 amount is a great amount. Uh, this is the time when we're uh, here to support each other and support our uh, population and our neighbors. Uh, we're we're all struggling. There's a lot of lost, um, you know, businesses that are closed and. Um, 
right now we are dealing obviously with the immediate outbreak and crisis, but also this fund is going to support the recovery phase down the road uh, when businesses start opening up and people are not able to support themselves a couple of months from now. Um, and also, uh, hopefully, as a second phase, also we will be partnering with the EDA to start supporting small businesses. So yes, you can. We we would love to have donations to support this fund because even though sixty thousand or two hundred thousand seem like it's a big number, but when you look at all our county and the amount of lost jobs and small businesses that are struggling, um, that number is is a, just a very miniature of what we're going to need. So we we appreciate any support we can have. St. Clair Foundation, uh, the Community Foundation of St. Clair County has been so important for all those years since 1941, but uh, it's even more important uh, in today's society. It is a local trusted source. Uh, we like this fund because it's all coming to one safe place where people know where their money is going to go 100% with no administration fee, like I mentioned. Um, so yes, this is the time where you know you're going to trust where your money is going to go. And we are being very, uh, very transparent as far as how we're distributing the money. And we are uh, letting everyone know uh, where the money's going. So there is nothing that's going to be hidden or not known where your money is going. We know you're very busy, so we thank you for your time. And uh, thank you for all the great things you're doing for St. Clair County. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Talk to you. And stay safe. Back with our next guest in just a second. Joining us now from uh, Marine City is the president of the uh, Marine City Chamber of Commerce and the executive director, Kyla Hatcher. Welcome, ladies. Hi there. N nice to see you. Thanks for, uh, for checking in here under these, uh, these circumstances. I saw a, a great story in the, in the Voice the other day about a project that you guys have got going, which is called Marine City United. What's, what's it all about? Tell me, Laura. Well, um, we were contacted by Dave Vandenbosch, our mayor, um, and he was looking for a way to unite um, some of the business owners, some of the local, um, you know, our, our local government personnel, um, and, and some of other business leaders. And so we all met together um, on Zoom. Some of us were in uh, far proximity to each other. Um, and discussed what we wanted to do for our community. Um, Kyla was with us as well, and uh, we came up with this idea um, to start with the Facebook page and then see where that would take us. And Kyla, how did how did it come together? Uh, well, what we kind of realized is that the people that were in the meeting, um, because we had a bunch of like leaders in the area, I guess you could call them, and we didn't really have an online place for everything to just be found easily um and obviously times are confusing enough you don't need to be struggling to put food on the table for your family and things like that so we wanted to just give everyone a simple place to go where it's very easy like you need food you need help with elderly handicap things like that we want to just make it easy and accessible to the community wonderful idea how how's the acceptance have you have been up for a week or so now yeah uh we actually got a Pretty good following right off the bat. I mean, within like an hour, we had like 70 to 80 people. Um, I think we're well over 200 now, keep moving every single day. So that's good. We keep getting more information sent into us uh, to put on the website. It's actually on our chamber website, uh, www.visitmarinecity.com. There's actually a tab um, designated to it too. So, so uh, if I've got a service to provide for, for people, is that what, what uh, I should be on your website? Yeah, so any like uh, organizations that are helping with like food or hygiene products or getting people to and from the grocery store to doctor's appointments or things like that, we've had a bunch of people reach out. We have volunteers ready to go if they need extra help. So it's, wonderful. Yeah, it's pretty much just the community helping the community, which is pretty yeah. awesome to see on this side of it too. So. Laura, isn't it wonderful to see things like that happen so quick? 
Uh, we love it. You know, Kyla's been great. We kind of, you know, she was in on the meeting, and as we were talking, she was already putting the Facebook page together. Um, she's been wonderful. Our website for the chamber has, it's just chock full of information regarding COVID and all the help there's available for businesses. There's links on there. Um, there's links for, um, you know, residents, not just business. So it's just, you know, our, our, our town is like that. They just always come together and they're, they're a force to be reckoned with. So, yeah, um, right, right. You know? And it's free. That's the other word. That's yes. important. Absolutely it's free. free. It's free. Uh, yeah. The chamber had so many wonderful things that they had planned for the spring. You had llama races. You had all sorts of other events coming up. Uh, what's the status of everything's probably been canceled? Uh, are you planning to reschedule some of those events? Yep, uh, everything has been pretty much pushed. I mean, it's hard to tell when exactly we'll be, I guess, not on lockdown. Um, <laughs> so we're trying to move everything. A lot of our monthly events will just play by ear. Um, obviously, we're not going to put anyone in danger. That's safety is our top priority. So until we get the full clear go ahead to run our events, we're going to postpone those. Um, the llama races was unfortunately one of our bigger ones, but we did not cancel it. We're just postponing it. Postponing it. Um, we're thinking it's probably going to land sometime in August now, um, but we'll be releasing a date on that soon. Well, just um, keep... And then our golf outing from May also got pushed. That's now in September, September 18th. So. Just keep feeding the llamas so that they'll be able to right. have a good race. Right, exactly. So they'll be ready to race. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be the fastest llamas you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> or slow. Right, right. <laughs> Any other thoughts, Laura? No, it's just, it, it's trying times. You know, it's, it's really sad to be downtown and, and all the businesses are closed and you don't see the trap, you know, the people. There's a lot of walking, you know, people are walking and they're going to the parks and there's a lot of families together. Um, but it's sad to see, you know, the business owners, you know, that are normally there at eight o'clock in the morning, they're not. And so we're, I'm looking forward to see it um, you know, busy again, like it was, and I know it will come back and, and we're just going to be ready for it. Yep. And in the meantime, we're providing the information we can to our business owners so that they, they have what they need to survive during this time. Okay. So the website is visit That's up on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. Visit marinecity.com. Yep. And the Facebook page is what? Um, there's two of them, so you can either go to the Chamber of Commerce. If you just search Marine City Chamber, you'll find it. Or you can search Marine City United, which will also take you. That's the one that has more of the resources on it. And the Chamber one is more kind of how we're helping the Chamber. That'd be more business. Okay. Very right, good. Have we missed anything, yeah. ladies? Um, be on the lookout. Uh, we are going to be oh. having a visit from the Easter Bunny. Um, no kidding. Online. Um, for all the kids and things that did not get to see them this year. Right. This would, year, he be, so. would he be a personal friend of Todd's? <laughs> he is. He is. He's been is. in contact with the Sweet Tooth, so. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. We yep. will be bringing him down to the chamber, um, more so so the kids can at least see him and wave and say hi and things like that. Where is um, that going to be? a little bit restricted on what we can do. But Where is that going to happen? It will be on our Facebook page. Uh, okay. I will share it on the chamber Facebook page and also our Marine City United page and then it'll be shared, I'm assuming, on some other sites as well, so. Okay. But yeah, be on the lookout. He'll probably be here Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you, ladies. Keep up All the right, great thank work. thank you. Stay yep. safe. Thank you for having Stay us. Home. Stay safe. Coming up next will be uh, Phil Russell. He had a, a parade. He's the principal of the, East, uh, the, the Gearing Elementary School in East China School District. And there was a special uh, ceremony, a celebration for one of the uh, Marine City Middle School teachers who had COVID-19 and is recovering. And there was a parade by our house and then around town. We'll show you that next. Well, uh, lots of sad things have been happening around uh, East China School District and around St. Clair County. But uh, the other day, the principal of Gearing Elementary, Mr. Phil Russell, 
went above and beyond and organized a little happy day and a happy parade. Phil, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Paul. Um, tell me what uh, what your idea was and how it how it came out. Well, we've been getting a lot of great ideas on on Facebook and social media about how to try to do something with a uh, positive with the community. Um, we've, we've been seeing some um, other districts post some things in that. And um, actually we had the Governor Whitmer said um, during her press conference last week about um, a school district um, doing a parade. And, and we had been kicking it around for a week or two. And then we thought, well, if we have the support of the governor, um, then maybe it, it, it is a good right. idea for us to do this. And so we, we um, talked to some, some of the staff and we actually had a, um, a majority of the staff um, was, was supportive in doing it. And so we said, all right, let's, let's give it a try and let's do this. When uh, you started, you talk, we talked about the idea. You said the parade was going to start out on uh, Delano, South Delano. And there is a reason for that because one of the teachers from uh, Marine City Middle School had contracted the virus and uh, was finally coming home. Tell, me, tell us about that. Yes, so we decided to start um, coming out of gearing and we took uh, gearing down to Kearney and we were gonna come around Clinton down to Cox Road and coming down Delano. We wanted to start over um, on Delano because we had a, a teacher from the district, Corey McCullough, she works down at Marine City uh, Middle School she had the virus and w was in the hospital and um and ended up coming c coming home a couple of days before the parade and that that's what really put us over the top and deciding that we needed to do this and you can see there was um some of the teachers from marine city um middle school came down and decorated her yard um so that when she came home she's seen all of that which was which was overwhelming. Um, so that's where we decided to start the parade off. Um, it was beautiful. It was, uh, it was very emotional. Uh, she was standing on the front porch with a great big blanket around her and uh, all dressed in warm clothes. And then I would assume her children on the front lawn waving at all the cars that went by. How many total participants did you have in the parade? Uh, we had about 32 or 33 vehicles um, participated. Um, that's you and, coming and there it in, the, was, in the silver truck. It, yep, that's that's us starting, and we were coming down the hill into St. Clair. Um, it actually took a little bit longer than we had imagined. I, I was leading the leading the route, and um, I was in no hurry because it was very cool to see all of the kids and the families outside. Um, so as you drove as you drove around the, town, uh, people were on their front lawns waving at you, right? Yes, we had everybody. There was. It, we knew that when we started this, that it, it would turn into something more than just a gearing parade, and that it would turn into a St. Clair parade. And there was all sorts of people that were outside. Um, we had people waving American flags. We had people um, playing their radios and, and waving and dancing at us. And we had all sorts come out. And it was really more than just a St. Clair parade because it was for. A basically started for a Marine City Middle School teacher. Yes, there, there was all sorts. There was people parked um, around Greg Park and Imagination Station. We had people parked um, on the boardwalk and we had people parked in the mall. Uh, we also had cars pull over and wave at us. We had all sorts of people participating. That's great stuff. Uh, give us a couple seconds on how to keep uh, students happy till things get uh, finally organized. Uh, throughout the state of Michigan. What, what are your thoughts? You, we're not stressing too much um, on, on curriculum right now until we get our plan out, but we just want kids to be able to, to read a little bit, you know, 15, 20 minutes a day, maybe do a little bit of math, um, but definitely um, more social, emotional, trying to stay happy, going for walks, exercising, um, those sorts of things to be able to um, just try to be able to get some fresh air and, and, and stay somewhat active during this these unprecedented times. Well, they're certainly, uh, if they weren't interested in history, they're, they're living it. So it's, a, it's a, a whole new world, isn't it? Yes, this is our, there's no template to follow. We're doing everything that we can. Phil, thank you very much. I know you'll get uh, back to the classroom one of these days soon, and that's where you, you love to be. So 
Keep up the good work. We appreciate it, Paul. Talk to you. Thank you. Well, uh, we're uh, always learning something new every day that we're going through this event, and uh, we'll uh, try and keep you informed uh, from this desk uh, as much as we can. Till next week, till next time, I'm Paul Dingaman. Thanks very much for tuning in to Focus. Thanks for watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Focus is produced at the CTV Community Television Studios in St. Clair. For over 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter to our community.